Hi, I'm writing. This is the Cheat Engine table that I have made for Borderlands 3. Now, once you have Cheat Engine installed and you have the table downloaded, I recommend putting the table in the My Documents, My Cheat Tables folder so that Cheat Engine can automatically find it and offer to load it. Once you have Cheat Engine running, click in the upper left and you choose which process to attach to. You're going to choose Borderlands 3, and it found a table that matches the executable name, so it's going to offer to load it. I'm going to hit yes. If you have not placed it in that folder or if you renamed it or for some reason, reason that doesn't happen, you can just click the open button here and browse to it manually. Now you can see that we have a number of scripts here. When you click the script, it will uh, run it and do some stuff and pull out some values. So sometimes you may have to do something to get the values to show up, sometimes you might not. So like coordinates shows up, you know, immediately. So we can see here that these are the coordinates of my location in the game. I currently have fixed minimap rotation on. Unfortunately, there's no option for fixed main map rotation, but fixed minimap rotation, it does not rotate when I rotate. So I can use this in order to kind of figure out where I am, you know, positionally. So you can see I have my Y, X, and Z here, and as I move in game, they change, and I can actually change this as well. For example, if I wanted to move myself 500 positive on the Y, I would add 500 to my Y value, and once I edit it, you can see that I immediately change. Now I've set up shortcut keys, hotkeys. If you click on one of these and hit Control H, you can access the hotkey. You can disable it, you know, delete it, add it, edit it, whatever. The way I have it set up is the number pad. You can see I'm facing north in the minimap, uh, forwards, backwards, left and right on the number pad. Uh, actually, edit your position so you can use this to warp around. You can warp through walls and stuff like that if you want to. Uh, the minus key warps you way high into the air, and of course you can tap it repeatedly, get really high in the air, see stuff you're uh, not supposed to see. <laughs> and of course, uh, if you want to go down, you can either just fall down, or you can tap the plus key in order to move yourself down a little bit. Uh, you'll fall normally, however, I have the plus key in case you get yourself, say, like onto a roof or something, and you want to go down through the roof, just hit the plus hot key and you'll go down a bit and go through the roof. Let's see. So you can use these to warp around and like see things you're not supposed to see, get out of places. Just note that if you go under the floor, there's a death barrier. I <laughs> I only did it for a split second because I didn't want to respawn. There's a uh, death barrier under the ground in most places. So the next script we have is find move speed, and this one we don't need to do anything to get it to show up as well, it just shows up there as one. So this is your speed multiplier. This can be modified if you have various uh, stats. For example, Amara has a skill where when you take damage your movement speed increases a bit. So let's say if I wanted just, you know, this is one times movement speed, what if I wanted to set it to uh, ten times movement speed and just start running? Well, I can do that. You can jump. It doesn't affect your jump height, but you know, your jump carries your uh, movement with it. Let's make it 25. 25 times run speed. That seems perfectly fine, right? You can sit here and you can actually stop moving and slide a pretty good distance as well. Alright, let's set it back to one times. So the next script I have is find a mission timer. Now, this is the mission timer for things like the burger delivery missions, and as far as I am personally aware, that's the only thing that uses a mission timer, actually. There's more than one burger delivery mission. There's, you know, on at least two planets. I have not done any endgame content myself, so I don't know if uh, endgame content has a sort of timer that you might want to modify. If so, this script might or might not work. I can't tell because I haven't done those yet. We can see here there is no value for this because there is no mission running that has a timer on it. But So this is there in case you wanted it. Um, the value would be in the number of seconds, you know, total seconds with a decimal. So let's look at player stats. It's going to take a second to find it. There we go. So these are all the player stats. So we can see here your maximum health, your health regen per second, you know, as a decimal percentage. So I have 7% health regen per second, which I have based on skills I have. You could set this to 100 or something like that. There we go. Set it to 100, and now you'll, like, regenerate 100% of your health constantly. Just. So you can see there, I, uh, I regenerate my health pretty much instantly. Come on. See, there we go. We just set back to normal. All right. So in health amount is like your current health amount. 
So then we have shield max, shield regen points. Now, it's important to know, why do I have these here, you know, when I could just make a simple script to check for god mode? Because I'm not... this isn't specifically made for cheating. You can cheat with these tables, but it's also used for, you know, exploring the actual value. So, for example, shield regen points and shield delay, I have so that I can see the actual results of various skills. So if we go and look at my actual shield, do, 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 do. We can see my shield says 9994 capacity. However, my actual shield amount is 10501. We can see here it's actually 10500.7 and looks like the game just rounds up. So now we know that the game will actually round up your shield display. So I kind of have 0 0.3 less shields than the game really says I have, but you know, that's understandable. We can see the regen points, 1109. However, my shield... Oh, these menus are still so laggy. My shield says it 1071. So you can see I'm getting a slight shield recharge buff. The regen delay is 3.19 in actuality, even though the item is 3.3. Without any skills, you'd be able to see the actual thing. So like this 3.3 is rounded. Um, so it's not rounded to 3.19. I'm getting 3.15 for my skills. But yeah, whatever. If you're a nerd and you want to see all the actual numbers, they're there. There's also like your maximum ammo amount. So like I've got nine max grenades, but if I wanted to change this to 99, go into my menu, you can see it thinks I'm low on grenades because it thinks I have 99 max. Let me just set that back. And there's your current. And there's also your skill cooldown. So we can see here there's two values, the speed and the timer. The timer is used once you fire off your action skill. It counts up, and when it reaches the uh, set amount, you know, for your action skill, then it, uh, blah, 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 then it's cooled down. Skill cooldown speed, however, you could modify. This is modified by some skills. Let's say 9, to fire this off and to regen it 9 times quicker. Boop, there you go. Just note that there is a set time when uh, when your action skill is in use, it won't start regenerating. There we go. So you could like, you know, use this to give yourself really quick action school cooldown, or you could use it to, you know, see what the actual speed of increase is based on various skills and such. Let me check that. Alright, speaking of skills, find skill points. Which does nothing because unlike most of these other scripts, we haven't done anything, you know, nothing is happening on the screen that actually involves our skill point value. Let's go into the skill point menu, and you can see then it populates. We'll actually have to go in and then out. There we go. Now it populates to 8. So we could change that, let's say 99 skill points, and then spend one, and bam, skill points left 98. Now, if you do this and you spend too many skill points and you want to get back, you can just go respec at a new U station. It'll give you all your skill points back, and then you can just like set them back down to the amount you should have at that level. Let's uncheck that. All right, find currency. Now, this one... <sighs> Borderlands 3 treats currency kind of weird in the code, and in order to get these values to show up, your money needs to change, not your iridium. If you change your iridium, the values will be offset. Just change your money. You can do this easily by just buying something and then reselling it. So there we go. Bought it and resold it. So See, there we are. We have our money and iridium values. Go into our inventory. These values should match. Yep, there we go. And I've color-coded them to make it easier to see. So, you know, I could uh, double-click this value to edit it, copy it, just make it a bunch of nines, and then, uh, there we go. Let me add another nine onto that. See, there we go. We just set it back to normal. So you can use this to, you know, see or edit your um, money or iridium values. They are uh, integer values. They are not floating points, so they do not have a decimal. They do not have, you know, there, there's not really anything interesting to see. This is basically just for cheating it. <laughs> then we have find golden keys. So we can see here that it hasn't found the value because we need to open our menu and close it. So there we go, 172 golden keys. Could change it down to three. Now I've got three golden keys. Um, if you have not used any golden keys, or if you have never obtained any golden keys, rather, this may not work for you. I don't know if this is true or not. However, you know, uh, I have already uh, attained and used golden keys. You can double-click the script. 
and you can find in the comment there are some codes for golden keys. If you are watching this video far in the future and you do not have, you know, uh, the ability to put these in because it says that they're expired or they're disabled or maybe the format changes in a couple of years or something. Borderlands staff tweets out golden keys. You can just Google Borderlands 3 golden keys and find all sorts of code. All right. So now find shop info. We can see that this is a floating point value, which means, you know, it's a value with a decimal. We can see that it is currently counting down. And this is actually the number of seconds until vendors reset. So we can see 315 seconds. We can see, you know, a properly formatted display over here. L let's say I look through this and I'm like, hmm, you've got crap here. But I don't want to wait five minutes for you to restock. Well, I'll simply set it to zero seconds left and you can see that it restocks. There we go, nice fresh new stock, which probably doesn't even look like that because they're still all greens. Let me do it again. There we go! Now it's obvious that the stock has changed because he's got an epic in there. And this is not just for the one you're looking at. You can see that like both of them change. So there's an epic and an uncommon. We're going to change this to zero. This refreshes to another uncommon and another... Uh, oh wait. Try it again. Boop, an uncommon and an uncommon. So there we go. It affects all of them regardless of whether you are looking at them or not. So that one refresh. Ooh, rare. Ooh, neat. All right. So this affects all vending machines in your currently loaded map because, you know, they all run off at the same timer. Let me check that. So now we're getting to some interesting things. Find weapon stats. Now, this might have incorrect stats at any given time. Uh, in general, just swap to a weapon and wait a second for it to, up for it to update. Um, let's see. Head over to find some enemies real quick. Yeah, over here. So now these are not the uh, stats of the actual weapon item in your inventory. Th these are the stats of the weapon as it is in your hand. So again, this is like the damage, the accuracy, the fire rate, the projectiles uh, with your various skill bonuses. And this also means that you can modify these without changing the actual inventory item, which, you know, there's issues with, you know, item management. The game will delete items that it believes are corrupt or have mismatching data or something like that. So this avoids that. You can't do anything crazy with this. Just edit some of the some of the stats that it has while in your hand. But, you know, this is a safer way of doing it and it's simpler than, you know, using a save editor um, if you're already using this table. All right. So we can see here accuracy is 1.2. What if I wanted to... The way Borderlands accuracy works is you may think that increasing this value increases the accuracy, but no. Like, the more accurate a weapon, the smaller this value is. So we can see here that I've got this small circle there. All of my shots fired are going to land within that circle. If I were to increase that value to 0 0.1, you can see that a uh, super tiny circle now. And if I were to change my accuracy to a stupid amount, like 9, you can see I've a... Uh, oops, it reset. There we go. You can see I've got a pretty big circle. 99. Oops. There. Uh, excuse me, game. There we go. All right. So you can see here my shots are... Uh, they're kind of going very, very wide. <laughs> Let me reset that. Of course, you can do other things, like change the projectiles. So, for example, this is a shotgun. This is the uh, conference call, which has the added ability of firing off additional projectiles to the side. Now, by default, this is five projectiles. I could reduce it to one. You can see uh, much less of a spectacle. I could increase it to 99. And there we go. You can see it fires out many more projectiles. Now, I could increase it to 999. However, this is going to be kind of laggy. <laughs> oh, that hurts to watch. All right, set it back to five. So if you just wanted to, you know, change your weapon stats, make an overpowered weapon just while you're holding it without, you know, risking things, you can do this. Now, find reload. Um, this isn't really that useful because you have to swap to a weapon and then reload with it in order to find the value. We can see the value here. I'm just going to copy that. Let's say if I want to make my reload very fast, 0 0.1 seconds. Um, do not set your reload to flat 0. The game bugs out. It doesn't handle that. So let's just set it to 0 0.1 seconds. And you can see I reload pretty much instantly. I can sit there and reload fire at the same time. Of course, if you wanted to really appreciate Jacob's reloads, you could set it to like 10 seconds and then reload. Oops. 
I actually forgot to hit enter. There we go. We can sit there and watch in slow motion at the uh, detail Jacobs reloads, which I appreciate because you actually uh, remove and replace the right number of bullets in the chamber with the right size chamber for most guns. Let's just reset that. All right. Now, the last things we have... Oh, well, actually, let me go to weapon stats and show you that this stuff actually works. All right, so that's 2,000. Let me just freeze this and go kill one enemy with it. I am going to deal more than 2,000 damage, but that's because Amara has a skill that increases the damage you deal with your weapons depending on how close you are to the enemy. So, boop, there we go, 2,999. Well, let's go and change this to 9,000. 200 or 92,000 sorry I can read I promise no I can't shoot a dude and whoops bam 149k damage very nice where's it oh there he is oh well <laughs> my retaliation skill got him but yeah so you can see that you can you know edit your stats and become OP temporarily if you wanted to fiddle around here all right. Now the last things. These are these are end game things. You do not unlock these systems until you have beaten the game at least once. Uh, mayhem level finds the current mayhem level. Got to go in and out of the menus. So currently I have the game set at no mayhem level. It's level zero. I do not believe that this updates on the fly. You need to reload a new map for it to take effect. So this isn't useful because you could just go to sanctuary, change it, because you've got to reload the map anyways. Um, this is here for research purposes in case people find other values or how mayhem mode works, and then I can expand it with the actual stats. So pretty much just ignore that. Now let's look at the guardian thing. This is kind of like Badass Rank in Borderlands 2. Uh, this applies to all of your characters. It, it has different mechanics. So let's find Guardian Tokens. But it doesn't have anything because while the script is active, we haven't gone in and out of the menu yet. Let's go in and out. We can see 97 tokens. All right. Well, let's say I wanted to reduce that to three. So here, spend a token and bam down to two tokens so you can sit there once you have a token you can sit there you know give yourself 99 tokens and you know just uh increase things all you want then we have find guardian ranks this finds the actual the, the total count of tokens the game thinks that you have put in now the only reason i have this here um this does not allow you to uh you know, grab everything at once, and unfortunately you can't really respec. The reason that this is here is because the final skill in the Enforcer tree, Hollow Point, killing an enemy with a critical hit causes an explosion around them. The problem is, the explosion deals damage to you, your pets, and even other players, according to, you know, many reports on the internet. So a lot of people are recommending not getting this skill. Patch 1.0.1 did not mention this, so I am led to believe that it has not been fixed yet. So what, what this allows you to do is you can actually change your Enforcer rank lower. So it's at 27. If I were to spend a skill in Enforcer, you can see that it goes up to 28 and the bar gets closer and closer. Well, it's currently at 28. If I wanted to set it to three and then spend a token, you can see that the bar gets greatly reduced. Now it's down to four. So now I can spend a lot more tokens without triggering the final skill. So using this, you can reset what it thinks your total enforcer rank is every so often to avoid getting the final skill. Now, if I were to set this to, say, 55, and then spend a token in the enforcer tree, you can see that it doesn't actually... Oops, 75. You can see that it doesn't. It didn't actually trigger these to, the, these skills. Well, that's because these skills only trigger when you hit them exactly, not when you pass them. So let's change it up to 28 again. So yeah, the only real use of this is for the enforcer tree to prevent yourself from triggering the final skill until they fix that. You know, hopefully they fix the uh, friendly fire on it in the future. And if they do, you know, just ignore this. All right, finally we have Find Guardian Stats. We'll need to uh, go out of the menu and back in. So this is the number of total tokens that you have spent in the various skills. You can see that I have zero tokens spent in vehicle damage because I do not care. So using this, you could greatly increase, you know, just increase the number of tokens that you have spent in order to raise these bonuses. Um, unlike uh, badass ranks from Borderlands 2, Guardian rank stats do appear to cap out at around 13 to 15%, depending on which skill it is. I haven't tested all of them, so this isn't that useful, but using this, you can actually reduce the number of tokens that you have spent on something. 
All right, so that's it for the cheat engine table. Uh, so you can, you know, warp around, change your stats, see the, some hidden details and all that. So um, go out there. Please do not use this in multiplayer to ruin other people's games. Use this just for yourself to fiddle around in this amazing game and uh, go out there and have some fun. Oh, whoops, wrong key. <laughs>